It's an introduction to computer science. So what's computer science? Computer science is the study of the most flexible machine ever built, the computing machine. Computers can do a lot. So to be a little bit more specific, computer scientists usually worry about three things. What problems can possibly be solved using computation of some sort, how to actually go about solving those problems, and then what design choices lead to effective solutions so that people can actually go out and implement these things and thereby help the world. Okay, so what problems can be solved and how to solve those problems means that there's some set of problems out there that are interesting to computer scientists. That list is really long. And in fact, most people who call themselves computer scientists specialize in one kind of problem or another. So there are people called systems researchers and they worry about building, for instance, large globally distributed systems that work from anywhere on the planet, like a search engine. People worry about artificial intelligence, which is trying to make sure that computers can do the kinds of things that humans are very good at. Uh, graphics researchers make beautiful movies and video games. Security researchers make sure that you can go about your business on the internet without the NSA knowing. And there are many more. Okay, so each of these different subfields of computer science has their own conferences, their own journals, and different people work on them. Actually, it's more complicated than that. So, within each of these sub sub... Uh, actually, it's more complicated than that. Because within each of these subfields, there are sub subfields. So let's look at artificial intelligence, for example, within that, there are people who worry about decision making. So the best checkers player, the best chess player, the best Scrabble player in the world are all computers. People build robots so that we can have self-driving cars. There's a field called natural language processing that's trying to make sure that computers can interact with text that's written in human languages like English or Chinese. And I bring that up because that's what I do. And there are many more. And within these sub subfields, there are sub sub subfields. So within natural language processing, people work on translation from one language to another, or text understanding, or question answering, etc. So the best Jeopardy player on the planet right now is a computer. Computers have become very good at answering questions, at least in Jeopardy style formats. Okay, so that's all of computer science. How on earth am I going to teach you a course about that? Well, even though there are lots of different problems to solve and lots of different ways to solve them, in all of these cases, the problems we solve are complex, and the solutions we have often involve some complexity too. And that's actually what ties all computer scientists together. We have a common enemy, complexity. So this third point about what design choices lead to effective solutions are often shared among all of these different subfields because they're all about how to manage the complexity of large programs. So what is this course about? Well, it's a course about managing complexity. And our main tool in the battle against complexity is abstraction. So abstraction is this subtle idea where it's a very human thing to do. It's when you view a complex system as a whole and think about its behavior without worrying about all of its parts and all of its details. So if you saw me walking down the street, what you'd really be seeing is some clothes and then underneath some skin and some muscle tissue and some bone and in there there's a bunch of organs, each of which has some sort of role in keeping me alive. There's a bunch of water there, a little carbon and nitrogen along for the ride. I mean, there's a lot going on inside a person. But abstraction allows us to think about what that person does for a living or where they're going without actually having to think about exactly how many oxygen atoms are somewhere in their body. Okay, so abstraction is something that you're already good at as a person, but learning how to use that in computer programming is a new challenge, and that's why we have a course. This course is also about programming paradigms. So these are different ideas about how to approach building complex systems, maybe having lots of different people all build the same thing together, and organizing those in an effective way. So 
it's really not about how to manipulate ones and zeros. That's a common misconception about what computer science is about. We don't stare at screens that look anything like the matrix. Instead, we decompose complex problems and use abstraction to understand them. This course is also an introduction to the Python programming language. It's a fun programming language. I think you'll like it. Now, when we learn this language, we'll do it slowly because we want to learn big ideas about computer science at the same time that we're learning features of the language. So we focus on the deep understanding of language fundamentals as opposed to any bells and whistles that have been added over the years. We're going to learn by implementing programming projects. In general, they're larger than the programming projects that I've seen other schools give to students, but I'm confident that you'll be able to do this. And um, another big focus of this course is how computers actually go about interpreting programming languages. So you really want to understand what's going on when a computer executes a program and make sure that there isn't any mystery left over. Because computers aren't magic, even though they give us magical experiences. Okay, so we're going to do all of this, and that means that it's a challenging course. It's going to demand a lot of you. The people who succeed in this course tend to dedicate a lot of time to it. So that's what this course is about, but it's about one more thing. All of these people. So all of these people are attending a conference about a software package, happens to be one written in Python. But the point is that every time you learn to program, you're joining a developer community. So that's a group of people who understand the same ideas, run into the same problems, and all want to learn from each other. So we'll form a community within this class, and you're also joining the million odd people who have programmed in Python before. And that's kind of exciting. So computer science these days is not about sitting alone in your room, just working by yourself with no external inputs, just you and the computer. There was a time when it was like that, but no longer. Now it's very much about collaborating with other people. And so I'd like you to do that in this course as well.